Good morning guys, Josh here. We are out on Ucha Lake today. We're gonna to try to get us some big old crappie. It's got just got done raining a while ago. We've kind of got a front come through the water stained up, so it may be a little tough. So stay tuned. We're gonna show you some side scanning in this video and um, show you a little bit about how to find these fish suspended in the winter time. Let's go. The eagles in the oh there he goes. Is he gonna just, is he gonna do it? America baby. Alright guys, there they are, right there. It's a school of crappie. They're right on the bottom today. Yesterday they was kind of suspended up. But uh, let's see if we can get one of them. Now, don't be fooled. Sand bass will do the same thing this time of year, but they tend to move around a little bit more. Um, I believe that is a brush pile right there. So we'll watch the jig go down, see if we can catch one out of there. All right, here we go. Down in there. Here he comes. Come on. Come on. It's... Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. And he went back down. There he is right there. Come on. Come on. That's a big one right there. And it went back down. That's right after a rain this time of year. That's what they tend to do. Here he comes, here he comes. Come on, baby. Maybe they want it set and still, so sometimes you just want to set it still and see if they'll hit it. I really need a cameraman, so I need somebody to just film me do this. So, go down into the brush pile. I think that's a brush pile. I didn't think, I mean, if that was suspended crappie or not. Boy, they're just, they're lightly, they're just not moving at all today. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back out. Let's get a new pitch over the top of it. See how they sunk down in that brush pile? That's usually not good when they do that. Um, See, they've kind of pushed themselves down into the brush pile. Um, usually in this case, I'll change the profile. Um, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put my jig down there one more time. And if something doesn't come up and hit it, I'm gonna change my profile and probably go with a little bit darker color. This water's pretty clear today. So, you know, you don't wanna go real bright with the color, especially this time of year. You kinda wanna match the bait fish because that's what they're eating down there. They're just eating shad little baby shad so golly I mean there they are right there Let's see if I can get my jig to come over enough so the object of this is to match your jig color to the fish if your jig color ain't matched up to the fish you're probably not gonna catch that fish uh, unless it's you know during the active season. Come on. Golly. Come on. Okay. So, in this case, boy, they have just, they have just not. I'm gonna change, I'm actually gonna change profile. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. So right now I'm using a 16th ounce. I'm gonna step up Oh, here, here comes one, maybe. I've seen him raise up out of that brush pile. That's that's definitely a brush pile. I thought it was suspended fish, but it's a brush pile. So, all right. So I'm using a 16th ounce right now. What I'm gonna do is step that up to an eighth ounce, and I'm gonna go with a little bit darker color. color I'm gonna go with is I'm gonna go with a dark brown and chartreuse um, brown you know is, a, is, is pretty much a matching color match the hatch color and so is a uh, you know chartreuse so the color I was using a while ago was white and silver Little bit bigger jig. Alright. Let's 
see if this changes it. Come on. Right there. See you sitting on that limb. Come on, right there. bass in there that's another thing if there's big bass in there don't even worry about catching anything crappie won't move i mean sometimes you can get them to come out of that brush pile but a lot of times they won't even move if there's a bass in there because they're scared they're going to get ate especially if there's a big bass in there and this lake has got oh here we go here we go got it there we go that's a big one. Oh yeah that's a great big one That is a nice crappie right there. That's gonna be a good one. Oh yeah, look at there. Ah, that's a good one. Look at that right there, folks. That's what we were seeing down there. And that's a nice 14 inch crappie. Let me, let me measure it real quick. That is a 15-inch crappie. So there's your 15-inch fish. That's a pretty nice one right there. All right, let's see if we can All do right, it again. So you've seen, by changing the color and the profile, you've seen that, uh, that it, it got that fish to react. But you also seen that bass come out of there. So, um, and that bass is right here. That's that's either a big catfish or bass and the way he's moving his tail That kind of looks like a catfish. So and that will stop the crappie from eating So if you can get the big fish out of there Sometimes if you just bunk them on the head and scare them out, they'll come out of that brush pile and then you can catch the crappie But a lot of times if there's a big fish if your fish are not active here we go Fish are not active and you're, right there's a great big one, let's get him. Come on. If your fish are not active sometimes, you can put your jig down in a brush pile and get hung up on the outer limb, shake it, spook the fish out of it. And when they run out, have another rod or, um, here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. He moved a little bit. Have another rod ready. Most of the time you can catch that fish. Now see how my jig color is matched to the color of that fish? Watch, I'll bunk him on the head. Think. See how I pushed him down a little bit? That means my jig is directly in front of that fish. See how I pushed him down? I could have snagged him, but that's not, that's not any fun. Go below that one. That one's a good fish, but we're gonna go below that one. Ah, oh, he's hitting my weight. I felt this tick, tick, tick on my weight. He put it in his mouth. Okay, see how my jig is darker than the brush pile? So that means that my uh, bait is directly not, it's not directly in front of the fish. So, what we're going to want to do is I'll reel up, and these are really not active here. I, I know where more active fish are, but I just kind of wanted to show you. Um, like I said at the beginning, I thought them were just suspending fish, but these are not. These are actually in the brush pile. Um, these brush pile fish are a little bit, a little bit more lethargic this time of year. You know, with the water temperature being 48, and it just got done raining two hours ago, um, and it rained all night. These fish are usually lethargic in the brush pile, so. The most active fish are going to be the ones that are suspending, which we call transitioning fish. Oh, here we go. Be quiet. Come on. Come on. Here he comes. And 
one just like that. Sometimes you don't catch them all. That's okay because we'll get another one here. It's a great big one in there. I can see him. He's bright. So it's not a crappie. It's a big. It's, that's not a bass. It's a big crappie. And I've caught big crappie in this lake. Well, I was here the other day. All right, here we go. So we got one coming up. I'm gonna drop down one more time and then I'm gonna make a move. Oh, here we go, here we go. Boy, he came out of there pretty fast. It may not, it may have spooked him. Okay, so, them fish that are coming in, kinda right there, them are sand bass. That's what sand bass look like. They're constantly moving. They don't like to set still. So, okay, so I'm on the edge of that brush pile. This is another good thing to do when you're on the edge of the brush pile. See, I may not catch a fish in this little section, but that's okay. I'm teaching. That's what I love to do is teach. So here we go. Sometimes you can drop it on the edge of that brush pile and they'll be sitting down there in the mud and you can get them to come out. Here we go. Because that, 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 that log may be silted in way down in here. So, you know. all right. So let's move right, to the next. Here's a stick sticking up. And you can see the hump on the back side right here. So them are crappie actually sitting down on the bottom. If you'll pan your live scope around, you'll see them. Basically, you'll see them coming up off the bottom there. So that log is silted in. But there's still enough sticks down there that they'll, they'll suspend on. So let's try to catch one off of that real quick. Let me back up here, it's underneath this now. I'll teach you how to do this here. If, if you want to get more in tune with your, your uh, live scope and learn how to target these fish and catch them, you can give me a call at 918-353-3530. I do live scope training. As, uh, we can go on my boat or your boat. Um, All right, so let's let's try this. Yeah. You can see them crappie down there. See that hump? There you go. This is stuff that most people are not going to teach you. This is kind of the secret. I'm gonna let it out of the bag. Uh, all right, here we go. And I'm fishing in the old nitro today. Nothing wrong with this old boat. I just wanted to take it out. All right, here we go. So my jig is right here on the bottom. Oh, got him. There we go. See, just like that. Told you. All right. Let's, let's right here. That's a good one. Oh, as soon as it got on there, there we go. Uh, that's a big one, too. It's a 12, 13-inch crappie. That's another big old nice crappie. Let's throw him in the light wheel. <laughs> So that hit as soon as it got on there. So, you know, don't be scared to find places that are not pressured because then we're gonna be your, your more active fish, you know. You fish the same stuff that everybody else fishes and uh, you find that the fish are a little bit harder to catch. But if you'll find spots that are not in the uh, spectrum of what everybody else catches, where everybody else goes, you'll find yourself catching better quality fish and more. So, all right, I'm gonna put one more on there. Here we go, right there they are, see them? Most people would overlook that. Of course, I found these with my side scan. I seen these with my side scan, so, um, I, and I will show you how to do that here in a minute. It looks like a catfish in there, but that's okay because we'll get, here comes the crappie. Got it. It's like that. Oh, that's a big one too. All right. Here we go. Yeah, another nice one. So, 
like I said, don't be scared to adventure away from what everybody else is doing. That's another 13 inch, 14 inch fish. Let's get one more. <laughs> get one more, and then I'm gonna I'm going to uh, do some more video. And see, and they come up off the bottom there. I've got them. I've got them feeding now. So usually, if you catch one or two, you'll catch ten. You can get them feeding. So let's try that one more time. Big boy. Got him. Oh yeah, that's a hog. Oh my gosh. Here, here's a two pound fish right here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's big. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, look at that one. Holy moly. Oh, I can barely pick him up. Look at that. Yes. Look at that one. There's a big old 15 inch, 16 inch crappie right there. Look how wide that fish is. Yes, sir. Now, if I can keep these fish alive, I'm gonna release them today because I don't need them, but look at that. All right, guys. Well, guys, well, you've seen what we did up here on, this, on the live scope. I'm gonna do a little bit of side scanning. Here in a little bit, I'm gonna catch some more fish and I'm gonna do a little bit of side scanning and show you how I found these fish using my side scan. I didn't use my live scope to find them. You use your side scan. So I'll show you that video here in a second and then, uh, we're gonna call it a day. It's uh, nine o'clock in the morning. So uh, I've got some things I gotta do today. Um, so anyways, here we go. All right guys, this is what I caught today. Look how big that, the more, the more monsters. Thirty fish, monsters. Really good fish, it was a good bite today. Made a really, really good bite today. Can you see my hand? It was a really, really good bite today. <laughs>